Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. Today we are in P5JS and I'm going to talk about intersecting shapes, how shapes overlap and how to get a completely different color when those shapes overlap with each other. I use this technique to create my latest art project, which is going to be released on FX Hash on Thursday, November 10th. A link to that FX Hash drop is in the video description and of course there will be links to the code that I'm going to be talking about in the video description as well. One way to have shapes overlap each other is of course to use alpha on at least one of those shapes but then you're limited in the coloring in that overlap area and also you're going to be washing out that second shape you can also use a blend mode to vary what happens in that interacting area but again you're limited to what kind of colors you can come up with in that interacting area the technique I'm showing you today allows you to do a completely different color in that interacting area, whatever color you want. I've talked on the channel before about using the clip function, but I'll go over it briefly. With the clip function, you create a shape, you call the clip function, and then whatever you do after calling the clip function is going to happen within that shape, but not outside of the shape. So here I've created a graphics, an invisible canvas. Uh, I've made a circle on that invisible canvas. And then I place that circle onto my regular canvas. I'm going a little fast here because I've already talked about this several times on my channel. The next step is to call the clip function. In order to use the clip function, you first need to do this canvas get context 2D. So we're going to name that context1, CTX1. Then we'll call the clip function. Now I'm going to make a second circle, but you'll see that that second circle uh, is only partly shown because of the clip function. If I take the clip function out, you'll see both circles. So that's how the clip function works. Now let's say you do the same thing, but with a second canvas. And instead of drawing this circle and then clipping this circle, we're going to draw this circle first and then draw a second circle next to it. So let me comment this out. And then we'll comment all of this in. And then you see you've got a second canvas with a second circle. And that this circle is being clipped. And then you draw this circle over here. So these are two different canvases, both being drawn on my regular canvas. If I comment this back in, one canvas and a second canvas, now I've got what appear to be overlapping circles with a completely new color in the center. The blue circle was placed second, so really this is the second canvas, and it's covering up the first canvas. So that is the basics of how I'm going to do the interacting shapes. But how do you do a whole bunch of shapes? It's more complicated than you might think, because number one, you need a different canvas for every shape. And number two, for each shape that you want clipping on, you need to draw that shape first, and then you need to draw all the other shapes after that. Let's say you're doing 20 shapes. On the 20th canvas, you're going to want to draw shape number 20, and you want shapes 1 through 19 drawn after that. So if you're going to draw shape number 20 first, and then draw shapes 1 through 19, that means you need to remember all of those shapes, which means that you need to put them all into an array. Now one thing I realized that kind of blew my mind is you can have an array of canvases. You can see here I'm declaring canvas is an array. I'm also creating an array of items because I'm going to need to push things into an item array in order to record all of these different shapes. I'm going to push in the size of that shape, the X and Y position of the shape, the type of shape because I've got circles or squares in this case, and the rotation because I'm rotating the shapes. So I need to remember all that so I can pull that information out later to use. Also for this example, just to make it look nice, I've loaded a color table. I've got a CSV table of color palettes. Each color palette has five colors. Uh, so this line is one palette of five colors. So I load my color table in preload. I do my setup. I've got a couple of buttons that I'm creating, but we don't need to go over that. I make a background. I choose what palette I'm going to use. This item number is just how many items I'm going to draw to my screen. Then I have a for loop for those items. And here's where it gets interesting. 
instead of doing canvas one equals create graphics, I'm doing canvas I equals create graphics. And so the canvas for item number zero gets created first. Also notice I'm using the width and height of my regular canvas. I could make my create graphics only the size of the item that I'm gonna be drawing, but I've chosen to make the canvas the same size as my regular canvas. I'm changing the color mode to HSB since I'm using that HSB color table. I'm doing the no stroke. I'm doing the CTX uh, canvas.getContext. Since I'm using squares in this example, I'm doing rect mode center. Since my circles are gonna be centered, I want my rectangles to be centered as well. I'm choosing the size of the item that I'm gonna be drawing. I'm choosing the X and Y position of that item. I'm choosing the type of item it's gonna be, whether it's a circle or a square. And I'm choosing a rotation, random pi. Uh, I could do pi times two, but since it's a square, it doesn't really matter. Then I get a color. I've got a function for that. So my get color function is getting a color between uh, zero and four and picking from the color table that color. And it's gonna return an HSB, hue, saturation, brightness. So then I fill with HSB. And remember, um, for everything that is being drawn on my invisible canvas, I have to put CNV I dot in front of everything that would normally affect the canvas. Now, if I didn't want to rotate all of these objects, I wouldn't need to push and translate, but I do want to rotate my objects. So I'm pushing, I'm translating to the XY position, then I'm rotating, and then I'm drawing a circle or a rectangle. And I'm drawing that from position zero, zero. If I was not translating, then this would be my X and my Y position. After this, I'm popping and then I'm clipping, uh, and then I'll come back to this in a minute. And then I've got all of this information about this shape, and I need to push all that information into the array. So I'm going through this for loop, uh, and at the end of this for loop, I'm gonna have 25 invisible canvases, all with a single shape on them, and none of them are gonna be drawn to the canvas, the regular canvas, yet. So after that, I have uh, two nested for loops. The first for loop is for each canvas. The second for loop is for each item. So I'll be starting with canvas zero, and for that canvas, I'll be drawing every item onto that canvas. Then I'll go over to canvas number one, and I'll draw every item onto canvas number one but I've already drawn one item on each canvas and I don't need to repeat drawing that item. So I've got an if statement here that's saying if the item number that we're on is the same number as the canvas that we're on, then don't draw anything there. Only draw if these two numbers are different. So if they are different, let's get a brand new color and fill with that color. Then we're gonna pull information out of our array. Each shape that's gonna be drawn has five pieces of information that has been put into the array. Notice we're not doing plus plus here, we're adding five. For item one, this would be position five, and then this would be position six, and this would be position seven. Anyway, we're pulling stuff out of the array, so we've got the size, the X and Y position of this shape, the type of shape, the rotation, now we need to go to that XY position. So we push, we translate, we rotate, and then for whichever type of shape it is, we're gonna draw a circle or we're gonna draw a rectangle, and then we're gonna pop. So we're drawing all the items on canvas zero, we draw all the items on canvas one, et cetera, until we get all of the canvases drawn. And when that's finished, then we can finally place all of those canvases onto our regular canvas. So that is what this is doing. We're pretty much done here. Now we don't need to draw every item on every canvas because most of the items being drawn are not even gonna show up on the canvas because of the clipping function. So if we wanted to limit the items that are being drawn onto each canvas, we could do some sort of collision check to see if the item number one is gonna overlap with item number two. But I haven't done that in this code uh, for the number of shapes that I'm drawing here, I think it's pretty quick drawing all of the shapes to all of the canvases. 
Now let me return up here uh, to the items that I commented out when we were first uh, doing that first loop. We were establishing the first shapes on each canvas. So if we've done the clipping, we can also apply a texture to the background, basically, of that canvas. So here I've got two different textures. I've got a watercolor texture and a paper texture. So I'll uncomment those. And it takes a little bit longer to draw, but you can see right here I've got a watercolor texture and here I've got a paper texture. I'm not going to go through the code for the watercolor texture and the paper texture. I've gone over that before. I'll leave a link to that video in the video description as well about how I do the watercolor texture and the paper texture. Uh, for the paper texture, it's the same code that I was using before, except I've just upped the alpha a bunch. Now where you see the texture is the first shape being drawn. That's the main shape for the canvas. And here you see this overlap shape is flat. It's not textured. Now, if we did want that to be textured, we could do it. But in that case, we would definitely want to be doing collision detection because you don't want to be doing 25 items with textures on 25 canvases. That would be a lot of processing, which with most of those items being invisible. Now, this isn't a video on collision detection, but I'll go over very briefly how you might implement that. If you've got two circles, uh, you know the radius of this circle and the radius of this circle. You can also calculate, you've got the X and Y position of this circle, the X and Y position of this circle. You can use the distance function to find the distance between these two circles, the center of these two circles. Uh, you can compare that to the radius of the two circles added together. And if the distance between the two circles is less than the radiuses combined, then you know that they're colliding. And in that case, you could apply the texture. And if they're not colliding, you could just skip drawing them all together. Now, it's a little more complicated with a rectangle. You might think we just need to look at the width of the rectangle and the width of the other rectangle. But what if they are colliding by the corners of each rectangle? So for that reason, you need to calculate the distance from the center of the rectangle to the corner of the rectangle. And for that, you would use Pythagorean theorem. So you can think of that distance between the center of a rectangle and the corner of that rectangle as the radius. So once you've got that for each rectangle, then you can detect whether the two rectangles are colliding with each other. Also, that would be something that you would want to push into the array so that you're only doing that calculation once. Also, if you've got a rectangle, you might want to vary the width and the height, which means that you're going to want to push uh, both the width and the height into the array instead of just one size. So I hope that was clear. I know it's kind of an advanced topic and maybe a little confusing, but you can take a look at the code and play around with it. Also check out my auction on FX Hash. It's Thursday, November 10th around noon. If you like this video, you can give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. I love to read your comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.